Tonight, we take a look at a man who's no stranger to controversy. He's one of the most decorated U.S. service members in military history, graduate of three different special forces programs with enemy combatant kills spanning four different American wars. Mick Gruber. To many, he's a patriot, a hero. But to many more, and in the eyes of the law, he's a criminal. I had a chance to speak with this divisive character and ask how he's adjusting to his new life in prison. What's life in prison like for you? Oh, it's great. Yeah, thank you so much for asking. Great first question, Ted. Do you feel that America has turned its back on you? I literally save an entire American city and then they throw me in jail for killing one dude. Do you truly believe that it was self-defense? Here we go. Yeah, yeah, more of this Jury ultimately found you guilty of all 18 counts. You displayed frequent outbursts that earned you a record 326 contempt of court charges. According to court documents, you repeatedly said, eat my All of you can eat my And then you pointed to each member of the jury and said, eat my you eating Is that not accurate? Next question. Some have suggested that you weren't the model soldier, that you weren't deserving of the accolades you've received. Well, some can go their own faces. A five-year congressional report uncovered a litany of human rights abuses and atrocities. Guess that depends on your definition of litany. But what's your definition of litany? But what's your, de what's your definition of litany? A plethora. And what, what's your, your definition of plethora? A bunch. That's what we said. We have the same definitions of the... The report detailed your penchant for cruel guerrilla style executions. Sounds like me. Refusing traditional issued weaponry, McGruber's preferred method of terminating hostiles is described by squad mates as a grotesque exercise in sadism. It's known as the throat rip. <laughs> I've never seen this before. Where did you get that? Lunchtime! Who's out for a little thrust beef? <laughs> Do you consider yourself a violent person? Do you like to kill? Pays the bills? No, seriously, do you? I mean, you, you know, well, I guess I do. <laughs> you know, when I was young, I just always knew that that was what I wanted to do, you know? I wanted to kill people. Um, uh, some people are just lucky they know what they want to do with their lives right out of the gate. Like, you probably knew you always wanted to be an ugly reporter. McGruber, what's a upper decker? Why don't you f tell me? An upper decker is the retaliatory act of defecating into the water reservoir of a commode. What you're seeing is a simulation created by the prosecution in McGruber's 1987 court martial trial for vandalism. We showed the video to McGruber. Your target in this case was Serbian ambassador Drogan. Petrovich, what did he do to deserve this? Dude was a butthole. Your actions embarrassed American forces and halted peace talks in the region. You know, look, I get the job done, and sometimes that ruffles some feathers, but it's okay, because I'm a lone wolf. But you weren't always alone. Prison officials tell me you've been sending these letters for years, but they always come back unopened. What happened between you and Vicky St. Elmo? Vicky's the light of my life. And sometimes the light can shine so bright that it burns the moth that's attracted to it. But then you just have to wait for the light to cool down. Then the moth can take its teeny tiny little moth and have sex with the light again. It's all about moths and lights and, and, you know. You're not scheduled for parole consideration for 40 years. And what's your point? You may never see her again. Oh, how dare you, you 
Easy. You have no idea what the future holds. You think they're gonna keep me in here forever? One day something's gonna happen to America and they're gonna need me and they're gonna come here and they're gonna beg for me to come out. And you know what? I'm gonna say maybe, maybe I'll do it, but I'll get out of here, you piece of And I'll get to see Vicky. And then I'm gonna come find you afterwards. And I'm gonna end your life and smile as blood pours out of your eyes and heart. You think I'm gonna stay in here? They're gonna need me. And that's how our interview ended, with more questions than answers. But despite his erratic behavior, McGruber has a history of impossible victories. He might not deserve his harsh sentence, but if what it takes to see him freed is another unwinnable existential threat to our world, maybe we should all hope he stays locked up for a long time.